Hi guys, DW Berman here with another quick little lightweight video. Hopefully it's going to be quick. I already recorded it and it was too long and the volume was way too high. Anyway, so I'm re-recording it. Hopefully it'll be shorter this time. Uh, this week I'm going over a tool that I'm not very familiar with and I haven't used it much. So I'm thinking there are probably a lot of people out there who don't even know it exists. So let's take a look at it. Here's my scene so far. I just have a ball that has a morph map on it and there's a couple of skeletons in there and I also have another layer where it's just a flat plane. Okay, what's going on with this? What am I going to show you? Well, under the Map tab, we have a tool under the Color section called Vertex Paint. And as you can guess, this lets us paint on our vertexes, or vertices, or points, as Lightwave calls it. First off, in this window here, we can uh, control it just like we can the windows in, in uh, Modeler the same controls exist. You can use the little widgets up top, or you can do the Alt click and drag for the rotate, Alt click and, Alt plus control and click and drag to zoom in and out, Alt plus shift to click and drag to pan about. Okay, so enough of that. Uh, you might think, okay, well, I'm in vertex paint, let's paint some vertexes, vertices. So you start painting and nothing happens. Oh, well, it's gray. I have a picture here, that, or my color picker here is gray, so let's me let's pick another color. And oh no, it's still not doing. Why is it not giving me paint? Well, you can go to the edit, create vertex color map. You have to have a vertex color map, uh, either already existing that you click created by clicking down here, color map I think, or clicking up here to make one. And in our case, now we have one, and now we can start painting. You see, hey, look at that. Now, you might notice that the the um, painted area on the back is larger than the painted area on the front. Like, I'm just kind of clicking there, and it's this huge blob on the other side. Okay, what's going on with that? Well, we're looking at this object in perspective. So, let me clear this, go up to Edit, Reset the Surface Colors. I'm going to change my brush size down. And I'm just going to kind of paint this area there. And I go on the other side, and look, it's large. All right. Um, what's happening is we are looking at perspective. So our viewpoint is over here, our origin point is over here, and it you know, spreads out as it goes into the distance. That's a terrible way of saying that. Anyway, um, we also have orthogonal view. If you check up here, we have ortho and persp, so it's perspective and orthographic, or orthogonal, I don't know which you prefer. Orthogonal, this takes all of the perspective out, so when you actually click and uh, draw in one side, it does not get huge on the other side. That's if you want to paint through your object, which you might want to do if you just kind of want to white it out, or blank, blank it all out in color. We have this front option over here, where we can click that on, and we can, you know, paint whatever we want on the front of the object, and it does not go through to the back side of the object. So there we go. Uh, so this is a handy feature to know about, as well as this front. Uh, we have the ability to use different vertex maps if we, you know, create different ones. You notice up here we have the option to select a morph map. That just lets us look at a morph map. So if we want to paint on the morphed version, we can do that. I don't think it really makes a difference to the morph itself, but, you know, it gives us another option. It might not even work with the, the, yeah, you notice I was painting down here, one popped up here. That's probably because it's taking the painting through the painting based on the original position, not the morph position, morphed shape. If that makes any sense at all. Okay, uh, moving on, moving on, moving on. Uh, we have our paint mode here, which we can, which is a little different because by default we are looking at what we can get with the what's it called the the airbrush tool in uh, Modeler, where you s basically paint on a vertice, uh, vertex, <laughs> and it just kind of fades out in all directions to all the other, the values of the other vertexes, vertices around it. Wow, doing great with that word today. 
But we have this other mode called index mode, where we can kind of click towards the point of a polygon, and only that, only the uh, that side of the the point somehow manages to get shaded. So that's kind of you can make some interesting things like that. We also have a polygon mode where we can actually just click an entire polygon, which is kind of cool. And I intend to show something about that as well. We over here we have the paint mode. We have add, subtract, and replace and erase. So if I want to make something brighter, let me switch back to point mode. You can see it's actually brightening up the points. Um, we also have the strength of that, so you can adjust the strength. Subtract, you know, will make the darker. And erase makes it black as well. And replace just gives us whatever color we had. Again, we have strength. If you turn it, you might have to turn it down really low. Um, and their color picker and stuff. Uh, I'll point out that we have uh, different keyboard shortcuts. For this, uh, Control Z does not undo, so you have to use U, the old old method. Color undo. Uh, there are a bunch of different settings in here that I'm I have not looked at, but be worth exploring. Under the weight tab, I since I have a couple skeletons in here, skeletons, we can actually start painting our weight maps for our bones. So let me. Drag this up, and there we go. Let me uh, subtract, and I don't know what over means, but probably over. So we can, apparently the keyboard shortcut for zooming out didn't work there. So we can you know, adjust our, paint our weight values for our bones there, and we can switch to a different bone, and paint the weight map value for the other bone. and uh, switch back and forth. Not sure what this does. Oh, maybe that, I don't know. It does something. <laughs> you have to look at the manual for that one. And I've not look, looked at all of these. These look like the standard. Threat hold. Hmm. All right, here we go. So that's that. We have the option to turn lights on and off. I, I've already been in here, so I've changed the color of a light and stuff like that. So you can select which light you want to edit and change things like the color. And turn them on and off. Um, and I will leave it at that. Oh, again, we have oh the Show tab. I should show you this as well. So we have by poly select by polygon and select by surface. I only have one surface in here. Well, there's bone and then there's default, but really only have the default surface in here. This lets us hide and and, and sh show stuff based on uh, so so we can paint specifically on things. With the uh, polygon by select set by polygon, I can select a bunch of polygons and hide them, and then I can go paint, and then they won't be uh, painted on. So then I hit show, and then they come back. Uh, we have a bunch of view options up here, and this B is background. I don't know what the T does yet. All right, there's our view modes. I think everyone over that. I'm going to hit close that and it says, hey, do you want to save the V-maps? And I say, yes, I do want to save the V-maps. And it shows up here. If it doesn't show up there, we just need to go to Surface Editor. And under the Advanced tab, we can select the vertex map. Make sure you're on the right surface. The vertex map there, and we have our options. OK, now this pane on the back, this plane on the back. If you want to use your really expensive, very powerful 3D application for something mundane, you certainly can. So let's go to our Vertex Paint, and let's take a look at our plane in Vertex Paint. And I'm just going to zero it all out to black. So first of all, let me create Vertex Map. And then, because uh, I did not have it applied to this object, I'm going to erase everything. And I'm going to lower my brush size down, pick yellow as the color for some reason, and go back to replace. Oh, need to pick yellow again. All right. 
polygon. There we go. Do 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 do. There we go. We can have a a running guy. If you want to do some old school 80s pixels, you can certainly do that in layout or in modeler, which is kind of funny, I think. So that's it. That's the end of this little video. It's just a short video to say, hey, there's this feature here. You might want to check it out and do some exploration. I certainly haven't done that, but it might be a useful for someone. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a minute shorter than the last time. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.